Right, Steve, we've come round to the east side of the citadel, and if you look up here, these crenellations, that is part of the original fort that was built in 1592, designed by Robert Adams. Uh, it took a few years to build. It, Robert Adams came to Plymouth uh, to rebuild the fortifications to make the town stronger, so he recommended a fort here to replace the original castle, medieval castle, that is down to the right, overlooking the Barbican itself. That went into disuse. It's beyond, it was at the edge of the town in those days, but as the town moved on, it was decided this place here would be a better point to build a fort. So this fort, it wasn't the best fort, and there are still some parts of it left. This is one of those parts. If you look on the map I have here, it's this piece here where it comes down on high ground and turns right and then goes down. It's not to scale, but it's Can you pretty good. Again, please, this is where we are. Yeah. That wall up there is this wall here, the original, the original fort. It certainly looks like it, doesn't it? Yes. Now, the government, the crown took over control of, they took control of this fort. Um, they recommended it, they paid for it, they built it, and they took over the governance of St. Nicholas's Island for military purposes. Now, this caused a problem between the town and the council. The first governor, Ferdinando Gorgas, had a lot of problems with Plymouth, uh, the council, because he, the military wanted control of this area, this fort, and so did Plymouth. Plymouth, it was their right to control the fort, because they had control of the castle before then. This went on through the years. Every time a new governor came, um, I forget his name now, um, James Bagg was another one who had problems, and Jacob Astley, who became a royalist general under the king when the Civil War broke out. He was the last royalist governor of this old fort. Um, he was very strong. He would go into Puritan houses and break up their meetings. Um, but the good thing about him, he was a good friend of Philip Francis, who later became a wartime mayor of Plymouth, Plymouth's greatest Civil War mayor. He got along with the military, but um, the, the new mayors after, there was a lot of controversy still between the military and the civic leaders of this town. Phil. Yes, Steve. Can you explain to us, because I got confused just a little while ago huh? about the Citadel, Plymouth Fort the and the Castle. All right. Plymouth Castle, the original castle down over the Barbican. Which is down there, whereabouts, Phil? Down towards, north of the, t to the north. It's down that to, way, Yeah, it? we're behind that bus, up on the hill. Yeah. Lambay Hill. Lambay Hill, yes. Yeah. That was the original fortification for Plymouth, with the two piers. And uh, then in 1592, Robert Adams designed this fort, Plymouth Fort. That's the one we're talking about. That's that now. one there, and I've got a good picture of that one, what Which it might look like. Up there, yeah, the see. original wall, yes. this crenellations. And then in the late 1660s, got a picture there, yeah, Plymouth Fort. Right. In the late 1660s, after the Civil War, the fort was dismantled, most of it, and the citadel was built. And that's the citadel we know today? Yes, except for this piece, which was put on not very long ago. So it's got bigger as time's a gone by. A lot bigger, by. yes. That's quite a, a lovely artwork, isn't it? Yeah, you can see Henry VIII's tower there. They incorporated it into the... No, that tower is the one we looked at just a minute yes, ago. Yes, Henry VIII's it's tower. It's on the whole rocks almost. Yes. Yes. And Fisher's nose would be over here. But it was quite a big castle. There's the old chapels in there. Which is still there today, isn't it? It's, it's the marks there. There's the, oh, yes. the indents for it. It's been marked out, but there's a new chapel in there now, I think. But it gives you a good idea what it looked like. Thank you very much, Phil. That's all right, Steve.